In the past few days, the internet tech space has been kind of burning. I'm fine! <laughs> why it's coming out all loud and squeaky because really I'm fine. Mostly due to the release of the AMD Zen 5 CPUs, the Ryzen 9000 series, that after two years seem to deliver like a 5% performance increase. Hence why people are calling them Zen 5%. <laughs> According to my own benchmarks, the 9700X can deliver up to 10% more FPS and the 9900X is actually not bad in terms of price performance if compared of course to the 7900X 3D for example, as it delivers around the same gaming performance but better productivity performance for $40 more. But the point still stands, their gaming performance is underwhelming. But before it's time to pay the bills since I just got a new house, with our sponsor. Wait, I didn't get a house with our sponsor. I did get a house and our sponsor is helping, obviously. <laughs> GVG Mall! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Over two years of development for just a 5% performance increase. And I believe this is why people are so mad about this release. But if you think about it, being mad about the release makes no sense. It is actually borderline dumb. And I'm not saying this to offend you, I've been there, uh, I've been mad for some reasons that I can't really explain and if I think about them, they make no sense. But I'm just saying. Because Zen 5 has been clearly following the same line of thought AMD has been pushing around since the beginning. Do something that works well on the server side, so we can get a lot of profit, of course, and then use it on the mainstream desktop side as well. And this is why we see Zen 5 CPUs performing very well in terms of server workloads, for example, and Linux applications in an overall scenario. Because they were most likely made with servers in mind. And you can see these results across the internet in several benchmarks. And again, I'm not defending anyone or any product because that would be dumb as well. And I try to not be dumb, sometimes I still am, but I try to not be dumb. Um, what I'm trying to bring you here is some information and some insight on my opinions and the facts that are currently around about Zen 5 to maybe make you understand that being mad at someone or something or some company makes no sense and actually takes you away from enjoying your life the little things and the big things. I mean, some people actually told me that I could see that I could be seen as biased because I didn't have a bad take on the Ryzen 9000 series that I reviewed, the 9700X and the 9900X that you can see on the channel, of course. I could seem biased because I didn't have a bad take like anyone else. And I was like, why do I need to make a depressed review? What's the point of that? I test, I show you the benchmarks, I show you the data, and I give my opinions. And based on the data that you can absorb watching my videos and on my opinion, you will then make your own opinion. And I believe that in my videos and in any other video, the opinions are actually the, the, the less relevant thing. You should be looking at data first, opinion second. But well, going back to Zen 5, because I tend to lose myself a lot, <laughs> at least in terms of lining a line of thought and so on. It does not only work better in terms of productivity, but it also works well in terms of AI performance. And I suspect that games and PCs will start having some inbuilt AI routine like we see with, with a NVIDIA RTX presentation in a very close future. And in that case scenario, Zen 5 could actually benefit in the long run. Not even mentioning the fact that we got some improvements that might actually lead that the Zen 5 X3 D CPUs are the real Zen 5 ones. Because Zen 5 mostly focus on prefetchers, AVX 512 that we'll talk about soon, and cache latency decreases that might also benefit the X3 D CPUs, as one of the reasons they didn't add more cache to some CPUs was that adding extra layers, because the X3 D cache, it is called X3 D cache because, well, you have several layers in a vertical uh, set point, instead of having them the cache horizontally, you actually have them, the layers on top of each other, in order to be able to deliver more cache on the same 
space, let's say that. And one of the reasons they didn't add more cache, for example, to the Ryzen uh, 700 series CPUs, the Ryzen 9 700 series, series CPUs, is that, um, well, as soon as they added another layer, the latency increase would be huge. And it seems that kind of tweaking the base Zen 5 to have lower latency on the cache might help as well on the real Zen 5 CPUs that are the Zen 5 X 3D. As for AVX 512, when some people went from Zen 3 to Zen 4, they saw massive increases in emulation performance because emulation does use AVX 512 instructions and that was a thing that only Intel had by then. But then, of course, AMD added uh, AVX 512 to Zen 4 and the increases in terms of emulation and some other workloads that actually make use of AVX 512, there are some games that do, in those scenarios, the performance increase was massive. And Zen 5 improves upon that, using a 512-bit data path for AVX 512, so technically emulation performance should have improved as well, but I didn't test it, so I don't know, but technically, it should. But sadly, we have lots of issues. Now, this all that I said, this is just information. Information that most times doesn't really make any sense to my viewers, since most of my viewers are gamers. And what they want, of course, is gaming performance. And for gamers, Zen 5 isn't worth it. Well, at least not yet. Some people have been speculating that Zen 5 is not working as it should and still needs a fair amount of microcode updates to work well. And according to the benchmarks I've done, I believe they're into something, as no company in their right mind would release a new CPU that actually performs worse than the previous generation CPUs in some scenarios. This while costing more money. And if they improved Zen 5 the way they said they did, then the performance should be considerably better across the spectrum of tests that we've been seeing. But no, only productivity, Linux benchmarking and maybe AI has been seeing some really, really decent upgrades, which is odd. And if this is the case, AMD is the only one to blame here, because they shouldn't ever release a CPU without, well, finishing it. And I believe Zen 5 is not at its fullest or final form, like Frieza from Dragon Ball, yeah. <laughs> We can all see that Zen 5 was not ready to be released because, once again, I do not believe that any company on their right mind would release a CPU that can be, can be, once again, slower than the previous generation 1 counterpart, at least, uh, in some scenarios. It makes no sense even when costing more money, even more when costing more money, so it makes no sense. So they might need microcode updates or maybe even a full revamp. But this is all to say once again that it makes no sense for you to be mad at something or some company and so on because it will take you away from enjoying the little things in, of life like sitting on this really comfortable couch, going outside, touching some grass. <laughs> Doing a trip with your girlfriend, staying with your family, just that. Take your mind away from those hate speeches, for those, from those downsided reviews or so on, whatever, those... doesn't really matter, just take your, your head away from it and do the best thing you can do, as always, vote with your wallet. If you think that some company isn't worth, or some company or some product isn't worth your money, or they, that nobody should ever buy that product, then don't buy it, vote with your wallet. This is the best way to make companies understand that they need to make changes. Because if you complain, but you then go and buy the product, the company will think, well, they do complain a lot, but talking or not, that's publicity to, to us and people are still buying. So it's a win-win situation. No, you need to vote with your wallet. Stay with your Ryzen 7000 series, move to Intel, do whatever you want, but if you think this is not worth it, if you think Zen 5 is not worth it yet at least, don't buy it. This is the only way that you can make companies change, because companies don't care about what you say, companies care about what you buy. And as soon as you understand that, you can actually, well, maybe lean back, close your eyes, Take a deep breath and start enjoying life.
Thank you very much for watching this little video. Once again, I just wanted to give you some insights on my opinions, what I believe Zen 5 is or isn't, or what it should be or not, and of course, if it will improve or not, like that AI thing that I talked about. I mean, it did improve in some instances, but it is really, really a close shot in terms of gaming performance, being at most 10% faster than the previous generation. And that is not good enough, especially if you're if it is costing more money than the current generation, or considerably more, in this case, considerably more. Because once again, the 9700X, for example, is costing like 40 bucks more or 30 bucks more than the 7800X 3D. And the 7800X 3D is better in gaming, and if you consider kind of an overall performance it is much better for 99% of the people so yeah thank you very much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share this video leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the performance what do you think about Zen 5 if it will improve or not just let me know in the comment section I really want to know and yeah see you in the next one I guess cheers